Welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to answer another question which is being asked by one of the subscribers. And in this case, the subscriber wants to know in an aesthetic, which is a back standard analysis, how can one apply a force where two of the different objects will be in contact once the force is applied to them. So it could be like an indentation test where your sample is fixed and your indenter moves towards the surface of the sample and then it indents into the surface. So I will just create a simple problem and I will show you how you can really rectify the numerical singularity problems and also how you can really activate the contact in standard analysis without any convergence issues. So I will again create a very simple problem from scratch and then we will take it from there. So let's start with part and then I will create to keep this thing simple I will just create a cube maybe extrusion solid back then this this is 15 by 15 and then I will give an extrusion depth of 15 as well so it's more symmetric so it looks like so I do we don't need two parts I will just create the same part twice in the assembly instance and then I will just try to make them activated so now if I go to properties again to keep things simple I will go with el elastic solution my favorite heel I'm assuming everything to be in the millimeters so unit should be in megapascals in this case and now I'm gonna create a solid homogeneous section material one property and then I will assign it to this cube okay and now we go to assembly I'll first instance this part once and then I will instance this part again but in this case I will offset it so that there is a gap between the two and now what I will do I will keep one of the blocks as fixed and the other one will move like an indenter in other application and I will try to see how contact can be activated or what could be the best way of doing that so let's go to the step. I will create a general static step because that's the main thing we are after. I will turn the energy on. I always prefer to do that. I always use a large number of values. And also for this, I use the minimum and initial and maximum increment size to be 0.1 so that we have at least 10 number of outputs because 0.1 1 divided by 0.1 will be 10 number of outputs. So step definition is done. Interactions we have to define now. So we go and we define the interaction properties first. It's a contact property we want to define. And we're going to use a mechanical contact with, contact with frictionless behavior and normal contact as hard contact. And it can allow separation as well if we are loading and then unloading. Okay, and then we have to create surface to surface contact and in this case we will select one of them as master and then the other one as slave again normal analogy is master surface is generally the stiffer surface as compared to the slave surface so again this window comes up i'm not going to use anything and i'm going to use interaction property one which has frictionless tangential behavior and normal behavior as hard contact which we just defined using this button here Okay, now we go back here. So now interaction is defined as you see here, which is this one, surface to surface contact. Now we go to the loads. I'm gonna fix this one. Again, quick solution. I will fix the boundaries, this boundary in all three direction. Again, it depends on your own problem, how you define the boundary and loading conditions. Now, first step is what should I do to move it and then indent it in this surface? So normally you apply a force control test. So you go with a force. So you can apply a pressure or a force there. I'm going to go with a pressure, let's say, or you can apply a concentrated force. In that case, you have to select the loading point. So I can select, let's say, these as loading points. And these again, the force value will come from the experiments, for example. So we are applying a force in x negative x direction. So it should be minus, let's say 1.0, something like this. And it's ram, so it will increase linearly. You see the force is applied in this direction. 
what will happen it will have a rigid body motion until it gets into contact with this surface and then you will have to move with that so now mesh again i'm going to use default mesh so it's pretty fine it's 1000 meshes so maybe maybe we can reduce it further so let's use 2.5 or something delete mesh mesh again and these are 216 i think this is more than enough for us for this problem as we are not after the accuracy of the result for the time being normally your contact interactions will be very dependent on the mesh as well but in this case we are not really doing anything on that so create job and then we say contact creation or something like this and then i always prefer full precision then submit now if you go here and look start monitoring the stuff then you will see that the job is submitted it's analyzing the input data which is fine and now it will start the analysis and as soon as the analysis starts you will see a lot of issues here and it's just diverging and i can show you what is happening here so because this is a rigid body motion here and you know static analysis doesn't have that mx double dot plus cx dot thing in the equation so you will get these kind of degrees of freedom issues also in this case you have a singular numerical singularities due in all three directions because we haven't constrained this body in y and z directions so it's also moving in y and z direction but it is also moving in one direction so let's first improve or correct the boundary conditions so what we can do to avoid this uh, i'm going to create i'm going to edit this well you can keep this here i can create a displacement boundary condition on this surface and i will fix it in y direction and then i will create another boundary condition on this surface and i'll fix it in z direction let's run it again still we will should get some singularities there so you see there are issues with the rigid body motions there so it is getting better but still We get numerical singularities and now you can see the numerical singularity in one direction only because we have fixed it in other direction so when you apply a force so there is no constraint in this direction and hence it struggles to converge so to to avoid this kind of issues when you have a force control test it's better to first apply a pre-displacement in the step one and you move this until the point when the contacts be, contact become active and then you apply a force so this is a possible solution i already commented on my video as well when the subscriber asked and the subscriber requested to have this tutorial so that's why i'm doing it here so first thing is i will go to the loads i'm going to remove this load for the time being delete right and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure the distance between the two surfaces and this comes out to be minus 1.5 so maybe i will apply a displacement of minus 1.51 or something so that there is some contact and then i will in the next step i will apply the force so that the contact is already active and then we don't have that singularity issues which we could do to the rigid body motion so first thing i will just create another boundary condition here which is displacement in this on this surface and I will say apply a displacement of minus 1.51. Okay, and it's ramp. So you see the displacement is there. And now I will start running it, the analysis. So hopefully this time it should survive. So input file processing has been started, it looks okay and now it will start to move to the other 
option and you can see it's pretty stable than the previous analysis and it finished in no time so now if i go back and see the results then you should see a rigid body motion and you have some stresses this means the contact has become activated so you see it starts to move with almost zero stresses and then as soon as the contact becomes active you have some finite stresses in tens or something so once you have done that now you so this means your contact is becoming activated and your pre-displacement analysis step is working fine i will create another step now and i will say create step after this and i will again create a general step here and again whatever 0.1 0.1 and then this is the step now if i go back to my loading and boundary conditions then you see they are propagated so what we can do we can deactivate this boundary condition which is actually this displacement boundary condition of minus 1.5 so we will deactivate that and we will replace this with the force so we'll say okay let's apply a pressure you, you already know how to apply the force i'm going to apply a pressure so let's apply a pressure on this surface and uh, which is which could be force per unit area in your case and i give a value of let's say one 15 or something megapascals so now we have a pressure force and this should be on in only on the second step not in the first step now this become activated rest of the step is the same and similarly interactions make sure the interactions are activated and propagated in step two as well now let's give it a try so we should have two step analysis so you see first step is with no problem and then the second step will start and you see it was finished with no problems as well so now we go and see the results so this is so this was start then you go pre-displacement analysis makes the contact activated and then you go to the second step you see you are already on the second step here and now you you can see your simulation is running fine your stresses are increasing and so on so so i hope you got the tick tip on how to activate contact when you have a rigid body motion for example indentation test etc that how to avoid or how to solve this singularity numerical singularity issue and how to optimally select the step-by-step -step configuration of your analysis so that you can finish your analysis in no time you see in this case it just finished in less than a minute or so so i hope you learned something out of it you have any more questions or if you want to learn something more please comment below or in any other of my relevant video and i will try to answer your question and maybe i will create a short video on that as well thank you very much and bye for now